Hey everybody. So I'm getting a lot of questions about whether or not you need to buy a mold to wet mold things. So I decided that I was going to go out in my garage and create this monstrosity to show you that no, you can wet mold ever anything. Now we do have, before we worked with Buckle Guy, before the two-part molds were really popular, um, the way to wet mold is you would kind of just make your own wet mold out of whatever and uh, work it down, cut relief cuts and all that stuff and you would wet mold. Um, but I decided to see if I could use paint sticks, a two by four, we got a little bit of everything in here to make um, like some sort of case, pencil case, some sort of case. We're gonna see what we get here and I'm tr gonna try not to sew anything but a zipper if I have to. Uh, I'm gonna try to rivet it all together and my idea was I've been getting into uh, a little bit of sign painting so I need a little uh, case to keep all of my brushes because you have to oil them and keep them, you know, from getting crusty and stuff. So I made this last night. It's about four ounce leather and we're going to take it apart together and I'm going to show you kind of my thinking behind it. So the first step that I, the first thing that I did was the way that I cut this part of the leather, I want this to be able to fold over so I can just rivet that. So that worked out well. The next part that I did was I did the sides. Excuse any lo really loud noises here. Now I'm just using Ace paint sticks. Uh, they're strong enough to get you a nice crisp line. And most people can get them for free at an Ace store or Home Depot or anywhere you get paint supplies. Now this part was the last part I did. And I tried to go a little artistic with it. So when you wet mold leather, I'm sure everyone's seen like the leather masks and stuff. And people make very intricate leather masks. And I've never done anything like that. So this is as close as I've ever gotten. And it's going to be comical when you see what it is. But all I did was I folded this part down like that. So there's just a little fold over here. When we remove this, you'll see that my entire mold it was just a two by four that I put a 45 in and sanded down. So the response I think is ultimately yes, you can wet mold anything. But we're gonna see if we can turn this into something that we can actually use on the daily that'll look really nice. We're just gonna make a nice little tool pouch for the workshop. I've made them before. I make them out of leather all the time that has crap on it. And I think we're gonna make something like this only maybe a little more artistic. So let's try that first, let's try that. We have the idea for a wet molded pencil case. We will do that eventually, but that's how I end up doing things. You know, that's, you get an idea. This part didn't work out. I thought it was gonna look nicer. I think that if I take this off, it'll make this part shine a little bit more and it'll just look more interesting. So I'm gonna get my calipers and I am gonna, we want a nice, wide edge to work with rivets. So I'm gonna give us a half inch. And I'm going to go down here. Oh, that's gonna be close. I'm gonna go down here. And I'm gonna go here. Now, cutting this, I've never done this before. This is a 100% experiment. But we're gonna see what we can do. So we're gonna cut off this bottom trim allowance first to see what we have to work with with this fold. I'm really loving this fold. It's not something I do often and it highlights the sculptural element that leather has when you wet mold it in unique ways. I think we are gonna just chop this off at a half inch because I don't want it any bigger even though it'll look pretty. Um, I don't want like a huge seam. I think that would look a little weird. So we'll cut this here like this. And we're gonna turn this around and do the same thing here. So now we have this really gorgeous place to put a couple of rivets and we'll obviously trim this down. But what I'm thinking is, we gotta just lob the top off. As much as I love this, this is a concept I wanna explore in the future. Sometimes when you're designing, you can tend to put too much stuff into one thing, and I could try to turn this into the top, but then 
I want to rethink this. I want to think this out properly so that it comes out as nice looking as the bottom here. Um, when you do wet mold things, you may get into a point where there's just a little bit of water. I don't want that bump right there, just that little tiny bump. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak that down. And this is actually seltzer water, so whatever liquid you have works. I have a hammer with a nice sharp edge here. And we're going to flatten that out. Now we're going to decide how high we want our little storage container. It came out perfectly even, by the way, so two by fours highly suggested if you want to make little containers for your workshop. Uh, let's go with, kind of want it to be short. So we'll go with, oh, this is the wrong way. We'll go with five inches from the base. So five inches from the base is right there. And now, this is going to look a little sketchy, but it's not dangerous. It's just we're lining it up by eye here. I'm going to make my line here. And the way I tend to do these, uh, you don't always get the straightest cut out of it, but you get a cut out of it. I'm going to cut like this from the top. Like that. Then, I'm just going to cut straight down. If it lines up, it lines up. If it doesn't, that's what Handmade's all about, right? There we go. And you could actually, you could use that for a whole other piece if you wanted to. So, now, we're looking pretty good. Um, what I want to do is we'll get a thicker backing piece. And we'll put a, I want to put a little curve here, which we can do on our mold. So I'm going to put this back on the mold. We're going to get one of our, well, it looks like we're putting them to bed. <laughs> um, we're going to get one of our little buckle guy circles here and get a little curve. And since this is a 2x4, and I got a whole bunch of them out back, we'll curve him. And I'm just going to cut that curve right on the 2x4. Now, is this good for your blade? Not particularly. But I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of blade to get a nice curve. Like that. Now we're starting to look pretty good. The next thing I want to do is I want to get a backer on here because then we'll mess with uh, the rivets we're going to use, the trim allowance we're going to set, but we need to get this glued onto a backer. So I have a chunk of 10 ounce leather here and this is kind of, I use these chunks like I don't, I'm sure a lot of saddle makers have use for these, but um, these are the kind of chunks at the end I really don't have much use for, except when it comes to this. Now we're gonna cut our back piece. This is gonna be the piece that hangs on the wall or the bench or whatever. We're gonna cut our back piece to the dimensions we want this piece because it's a little more wiggly, right? So we know that we're five inches across, even though it doesn't show it. Uh, we know we're five inches across and we are five and three quarters inches tall. We're only going to cut the across part though, because we need somewhere to put some eyelets or something that we can put some screws through and it won't rip the leather. Even though we plan to trim some off, a safe bet is to glue up to six inches, which is right there. So we're going to put. We're going to use that as our mark there, and we're going to do a nice half inch line of glue because remember, we have on our wet mold, we have a nice thick ledge that we can use to rivet together and all that good stuff.
And now you can make this kind of stuff with nicer leather too. Don't be afraid of that. Um, this is just a good use, practical use for leather that just doesn't look good or has spots on it. Or if you're like me and you buy really thick leather for very specific purposes, strap goods and stuff, and you have little kind of end cuts that you don't know what to do with and uh, no one really wants them, um, this is a great use for those too. Because you can put these, you don't just have to use them in the shop. They're great for around the house. They look cool. Your friends will come over and be like, whoa, did you make that? And you can be like, yeah, I did. All right, so I'm not promising this is going to be pretty by any means. But, uh, you know, we're working in sculptural leather today. So if it ends up looking like something weird, it ends up looking like something weird. You can't be afraid to experiment. So I'm going to glue that down. Not too worried about the bottom here because I'm going to cut it straight. The sides, I would like them to be straight on because we want to keep the width of this piece. And these things tend to cave in a little bit when you give them freedom after you take them out of the mold. But that looks pretty good. And we're stuck. So we have, I mean, that's a pouch. So what we need to do now is we're going to trim down more of this, but only a tiny bit. There we go. It's starting to look nice. Um, so the next decision we need to make is how we're going to hang this. And you can basically just pick any shape you want um, to kind of go like that. I got a little glue where I didn't want a little glue, um, which is fine. But once it dries up, we'll peel it off and it'll be good. I'm thinking we're going to grab our acrylic circle jigs from Buckle Guy here. I'm going to pull some of these out. I probably should have kept the one. Oh, no, that's not the one I used. Probably should have kept the one I used handy so they match, but I didn't, so. This is going to be, oh, that is the one I used, okay. I'm thinking we're going to do this. We're going to go like this. And I'm roughing this in. With these jobs, I don't take any measurements. If they look a little wonky, they look a little wonky. It's handmade. It's going in a workshop. I just want it to look cool, and this certainly will look cool. So we have a curve there, then we're going to take a smaller curve, I don't know if I have the smaller curve, this will work. We use the curve of a split ring here, that'll get us close enough, I can blend the rest of that by hand. Now I'm going to go very slow on this. I'm going to take multiple passes because it's a very thick leather. Even though it's a new blade, you don't want to cut yourself. There we go. So now, these curves are obviously not identical. What we can do is kind of shape them a little bit. Then I'm going to bring over the power sander, and I'm going to use that to get our curve even closer to how I want it. So we're going to do something a little bit interesting with this that I wasn't thinking about, and now I am thinking about, so we kind of have to try to do it. So I'm going to do my best here to punch a hole centered as I can in the middle of these humps, I guess you would call them. And then before we go anywhere else, we're going to sand down all these edges and rivet all of this together, because then our body is done. So we're going to hold this thing together with rivets only, and we need to mark out where we want our rivets to go. I'm going to use two sizes of rivet. That makes it just kind of look a little fancier. But obviously we need our first one right about there. I'm going to line that up using my cutting board. I marked the same place right there. 
I'm going to place these about an inch apart. No reason to, I mean, if you want, aesthetically, if you want to go further, or if you want to go closer, go for it. But one inch apart, we're going to use the tiny rivets mixed in with the big rivets in the corners. I think that's going to be plenty good for us. And then our main attraction is going to be one rivet right through there. Now on the bottom, let's see, we'll have a rivet there, we'll have a rivet there, we'll do a little rivet right there. So we have a diagonal of rivets, like that, then we'll line that up, and we want this to be centered. So even though these are an inch apart, we want to make sure that this is centered. So we got one more piece to make, and that's going to be our handle. I want this to have a handle. I want you to be able to hang this on a nail in the garage. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to take that, flip it over. I'm going to trace this curve and this curve out to there. Then I'm going to cut it out but only the bottom part, and about like that. So I'm going to set my calipers right about where I think it's going to look nice. And I'm going to trace this curve along these sides until I can't anymore. Right. I can finish that off by hand. There we go. Now we're going to dig through our pile here and see what fits this. If we can get it perfect, this is going to. Okay, that one's perfect. This one I was not so lucky on. But that's okay. Now you notice here I have some little scraggles and stuff. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of finish work, but I'm not going to do a ton, just because this is a workshop piece. I am, though, so the first thing I want to do is I want to curve this edge. I'm going to do that on the power sander because this is like 18 inches of leather, and I don't have that patience. So I'm just going to take my X-Acto, cut the bulk of it off, do any trimming that needs to be done sometimes when you install a rivet, it'll pull it in a little bit. I'm going to get our 5 30 seconds punch. I'm going to punch a little bit off from where our holes are, just so that they're centered when we install them. Won't be any much of a difference. Now you could go ahead and bevel these, you can sand them, you can do whatever you'd like with them. Uh, for me, personally, I like watching them wear in with the shop use. We'll hit a quick bevel on the rest of the edges. We'll rivet on our handle, which is not a handle, but sure looks like one. So we're just going to drop our die into the hand press, and uh, it's going to be funky, but it's going to be fun. I'm going to put both rivets in so that they are where they need to be. Meaning, I don't set one and it throws the other one off. This is going to look wacky, I'm not going to lie. It's not something I would normally make, but that's not the setter. That's the hand. It's, uh, it's something. So I guess, here we go. Uh, what can you make? Do you need a wet mold to wet mold things? Um, you do, but it doesn't have to be one that you buy or even make, short of hammering a couple nails into a two by four. So these are both the same mold. I just cut a 45 on them. This one will hold little stuff. You can throw tools in here, whatever you want. You can keep loading it up. 
And I like this one because if you have any sort of uh, hook on the wall, you just throw it right there and it holds. Does it look a little wacky? Yes, there are a lot of rivets. This is not exactly our normal style. Our normal style, something like this, is the same mold. Um, and this is just meant to throw two nails or screws through. Um, I'm planning on keeping some scissors and stuff in here. But this is a great use of scrap heavy leather. Um, the bellies and all that kind of stuff, uh, the stuff that's marked up, it's shop stuff, you know what I mean? You don't have to sew it, the rivets are gonna hold, and it's a good way to get like custom sized stuff if you need like, I need something to hold three hammers. Now I have something to throw, hold three hammers. And it gets old and looks awesome with age, so people walk into your leather shop and go, holy moly, even their containers are made out of leather. So, um, that's gonna be it for this one. Grab yourself a two by four, grab yourself some paint sticks, and use whatever clamps you got. Next time you have some scrap leather you don't know what to do with, and get creative with it. Um, but the way that you're gonna find your design style is by making things like this and either adding or subtracting design elements and finding your path that way. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, we will keep doing some wet molding stuff. I got some good ideas that are not related to Willy Wonka looking acid trip wet molded containers. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.